Hello, my name is Donald Fitzpatrick from Dublin City University in Ireland, and it's my very great pleasure to present this work here for you today about a new UEB converter that we have produced in my team, which will take an equation in MathML and produce UEB Math, and will also take an expression written in UEB and convert it back to MathML for their so that people can actually visually see what the equation actually is. So this paper is entitled, is all about the converter. Uh, it's enabling mathematical communication between student and teacher using UEB. And I'm presenting on behalf of myself and my co-author, Azadeh Nazimi, who was also at the time part of uh, my team in DCU, but who is now based in Australia. This project, the Euromath project, was funded by the Erasmus Plus uh, program, uh, the Polish National Agency with the funding agency. And there were three partners, NASK um, in Warsaw, who were the coordinator, Visio in the Netherlands and ourselves in Dublin City University. This talk, we're gonna have a little talk about the background to Euromath, uh, what the project was all about, where it came from, etc. We will then talk about the platform that we uh, produced of which the UEB converter is a component. We'll then talk about the converter itself, which this being a UEB related conference is probably of most interest. And we will talk about how we evaluated it and some thoughts on future development and where we would like help and input from this most excellent community. So the background to this project is that it grew out of a, a Polish project called PlatMap, which was a suite of Windows applications designed to, again, facilitate communication between the blind student and their teacher. There was a suite of applications one was a teacher application, which enabled the teacher to develop mathematical worksheets. There was then uh, an application written for blind students, one for students who required large prints, so vision impaired students. There was a calculator application and a cube rhythm, a computer based cube rhythm. I wonder how many people are old enough to remember one of those. I certainly used one in school. So they uh, produced a cube rhythm application, as I say, which was a lot of fun to use, actually. And uh, out of this grew the whole notion of Euromath, which was uh, essentially designed to take these ideas and to produce an application uh, which would broaden the context of use. So out of the Polish context uh, and into a wider European um, domain, if you like. So we were aiming to actually produce a set of tools that would be usable in several educational settings. The project itself was a very low budget project. Uh, and with only three partners, we focused on the educational settings of Ireland, the Netherlands and Poland. But there is no reason that this could not be extended out to other jurisdictions and other, other, other countries. So the platform itself is a web-based tool. And it looks very similar to other editors that you might have seen. For example, it has a menu bar across the top. Um, it's got toolbar buttons, and then it has an area into which text can be typed, mathematical objects inserted, and so on. And what's nice about this particular uh, application is that it is very much cross-platform. So we have tested this using Windows machines. Uh, we've tested it on a Mac. There are some glitches on the Mac, but, you know, um, we'll get there. We've also tested it using various Braille note takers, such as the, the Braille Note Touch Plus and various HIMSS devices as well. And I'm delighted to say that it, it did actually work uh, on those using the Chrome browser on those particular note takers as well. So it's very much cross platform. And the objective would be that the, the, we, we can facilitate what's called multimodal input. By this, we mean that we, we haven't restricted the, the manner in which the, either the information is displayed or the information is uh, entered to a specific domain. So 
to give an example, a sighted teacher can input mathematics using uh, Unicode characters or ASCII math, or indeed they know what they can input using Braille. And for the blind student, they can input using ASCII math or indeed the QWERTY, uh, Braille input on a QWERTY keyboard or indeed on one of the, 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 the Braille devices that people actually use. Uh, what the main objective of this was, um, was to produce a system which enabled a teacher to, for example, write mathematics in their preferred format, so that's the printed notation, and to actually have it transcribed and translated into a format that the blind student could actually use, and vice versa, of course, that we figured it was very important to enable the blind student to actually input the material in their preferred modality, i.e., for example, Braille, and to have it transcribed back. How did we do this? We actually developed our own uh, converter to take equations in the form of MathML, which is uh, a standard that's out there uh, in case people don't know what it is, to render printed mathematics on, for example, a web browser or indeed other devices. It's, it's used in math type and other things as well. So the UEB converter itself simply takes uh, an expression in MathML, puts it through some functions and some, some code in the background and uh, produces an expression in uh, UEB Braille. So, um, but the other thing about it is the same library uh, also works in another direction, which is it takes an expression in UEB and produces the uh, equivalent in MathML, which can then be displayed in, in printed form. It's written in JavaScript. And um, for those who want some technical details, uh, what's going on with the hood, um, what we did was we created a dictionary of mappings between uh, MathML characters uh, Unicode characters, um, and the Braille equivalents, the UEB equivalents. We have over 300 in there at the moment. I think it's, uh, last check was 300 plus. And um, what we then do with those is, is a very simple little function, which we can pass in a string, which is the MathML, and it outputs a UEB and vice versa. And for those who are not remotely technical and who couldn't really care how this works, it's now safe to wake up because the rest of this has very little by way of technical detail in there at all. So anybody who does want information on this, uh, my contact details are of course at the end of this particular presentation and I will be delighted to hear from you, uh, but more of that and how we would like community input uh, later in this presentation. The most important aspect of any of this type of uh, development project is how we actually evaluate. And for us, the evaluation was good. Uh, we chose an automated evaluation process, which was we took uh, various equations, equations, 500 in total, and uh, we rendered those as MathML equations. So very simple expressions ranging up in complexity to other things. And we used equations that uh, cover two things. One, we attempted to cover the various rule sets in the UEB publications, for example, the technical guidelines, etc. But we also then tried to have re relevant material that was we, we gleaned from the Irish uh, education, the curriculum uh, in Ireland. Uh, we're very happy with the coverage in terms of equations as automated evaluations go. And um, what we did, we took those equations, as I said, in MathML. We passed each of those equations to the library and we produced the UEB equivalent. Again, that was just saved out to a standard file. And then we took that UEB equation and retranslated it back. Okay, that's, that's fine insofar as it goes before anybody comments on the fact that if there is a bug one way, there's a potential for a bug another way, you're quite right. This is, is, is not complete. And it's part of the gaps in our knowledge, which I will come to at the end of this. But generally, this was a very good way of catching 
if you like, low hanging fruit and bugs of, 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 of medium difficulty. Um, what is important to note here is that the UEB output was verified independently by an experienced Brailleist uh, who knew the UEB uh, code very well. Uh, and that gave us a fair degree of certainty that what we were actually producing was of good quality. Uh, nothing is 100% accurate, but we are very, very happy uh, with the, the quality of the results that we got. Um, it's worth noting that this was initial results were, were fine, but it did throw up some anomalies in, in terms of, of, of some of the rules and some of the, the way it was actually putting things together. Uh, so it was very much an iterative process that we, we ran it, we fixed things, we ran it, we fixed things again. And so they, the initial uh, results were, were, were the initial bugs were ironed out, run again, and that was done a few times until we were very, very happy, as I say, with the, with the output that we actually gleaned. The accuracy is high, um, and it gives a lot of encouragement for future development. And this, I think, is where I really hope the UEB community uh, comes and is willing to actually get involved and, and perhaps help us. So what's missing? Real honest to goodness, stress testing by people. So what we would like to do is rather than just using an automated set of test cases, we would like people to be able to either give us equations that they think, mm, this could break this particular library. Let's see how the library codes with this. So either give us sets of equations in the form of files or to produce a simple little uh, application which would enable users to actually type in equations themselves. So what we really feel is missing is a, is a good uh, in the wild stress test by, by people. And uh, it'd be great if we could actually get people involved who were, were willing to do that, okay? So in the future, what we would like to do is we would like to, at the moment, the library is very much written for incorporation into the Euromath project, uh, but it is our intention to try and abstract things away to produce various versions of it so that it can be used in conjunction with various types of application. At the moment, it's designed for a web-based application, but it might be nice if a version were available for incorporation into, I don't know, an iPhone application or something like that. So it would be ideal um, to take the library, take the concepts that we have learned and the mistakes, we, we, you know, we can learn from our mistakes here uh, and to produce a very generic library that can actually be used by uh, a, lot of, a lot of people. There has been great interest in this, actually. I've spoken to quite a few R&D-based organizations, um, companies, et cetera, who are very keen for us to do this. So it's currently under discussion, and we would like to do that. Again, I'll reiterate, we're looking for human volunteers to actually help us test it and, um, and break it so that we can fix it again. Uh, it's that simple. Um, the, more, the, the more people, the, the more errors we find now, uh, the easier it actually makes our, our job going forward in terms of maintenance and everything else. I'll just throw this one out here at the end. What would be absolutely fantastic for projects like this is a properly tagged corpus of UEB expressions, where we have a MathML expression, the UEB equivalent, and possibly the rule that it relates to uh, in the, the various UEB guidelines so that we can actually verify, okay, rule X dot Y dot Z is not passing. We need to actually focus on that one. So the generation of really good test data for automated transcriptions and translation software um, would be an absolutely fantastic thing. And I think warrants uh, some further discussion and thought uh, as part of uh, our work as a community. My last slide is simply that you should feel free to get in touch at any time if any of this is of interest to you. I would love to hear from you. I'd love to set up collaborations and other possibilities. Uh, my email address, donal, that's D-O-N-A-L dot Fitzpatrick, F-I-T-Z-P-A-T-R-I-C-K at dcu.ie or at Fitzpatrick D on Twitter. And uh, if you search on LinkedIn, you'll also find me there. 
if it's easier to get in touch that way. Thank you very much for listening. I hope this has been of interest to you. It's been a great pleasure to present and I hope you enjoy the rest of the presentations and the other events surrounding the General Assembly. Thank you.